Welcome back to the farm. My name's Roz, also known as Passion Flower, and you'll find me here each week talking about my farming and creative life. Well, here I am back home at the farm after a week away last week, which, as I said, was really relaxing and just nice for a different like change of pace. But when I came home, it was just really nice to get back into the bush here to go for a walk and just to see how things had changed in a week. I, I love going out into the bush and just noticing all the tiny little things that are growing and things that move and birds and animals. It's just, it really is my happy place. So back to bush walks, not golf course walks. So Wade is just running around the yard and walking to and from the shed here with me, but not any bush walks or out into the paddock. It's a lot further, steeper and uneven for Wade. So I don't tend to take him for walks around the farm so much, maybe just the occasional walk to the dam, but nothing any further than that. While I was away, some more work was done on the chook trailer. The uh, automatic door was installed it's a solar door so that it will operate, so that it will open and close automatically uh, to keep the chook safe and away from predators so that we don't have to be out there monitoring it all of the time. We also installed two ramps for the chooks, one to get them up inside the trailer from the, the new door opening and then a smaller ramp inside that sort of helps them to get in and out from, from the inside of the trailer. Some of the seating from the old trailer was cut out as well and in that space is where the feeders are going to go. So we'll be able to open up the flap on the outside and add food directly in to the feeders on that side. And then along the other wall is where all of the uh, nesting boxes will be and you'll be able to open up the awning on that side and be able to get the eggs without having to step inside the trailer. We've also got a really big barrel on the tow bar side of the trailer, which is going to be the water for the chooks. So it will be filled and then there is a little trough that is operated by a float. So the water will just drain into there as it empties so that again, we don't have to be refilling water all the time. The idea of this is to sort of be its own little environment where we just go and collect eggs and do a little bit of checking, but that it's not going to be something that we have to really um, be vigilant about maintaining every single day. So we're experimenting with also increasing the grain capacity of the current feeders that we have. Um, the chooks step on it and it opens a little area and they can then peck in and get the grain. And it holds about, I think it's 10 kilos of grain at the moment. So we're hoping to increase that to 20, 25 kilos. So that it's, again, it's not like a, it's an every second day process of having to add new food in, especially if we've got quite a lot of chooks in that, in that area. So we've built up a box on top of the current feeder. Uh, and it, we're currently testing it in the current chook house to see if it still works, if the grain still feeds down and if it still um, is able to be pressed by the chickens and the grain still comes out. Because we're not sure if the extra weight of more grain will change the mechanism at the bottom. I think so far it's going okay. So that's a really good sign that we're going to be able to increase the capacity of all of our feeders so that there is less work in terms of topping up grain. I was quickly back into some farm routine this week though. So as soon as the new uh, chook door was installed on the trailer that we're currently not even using yet, the motor on the current one broke. So it was not working. It was just staying closed and not opening and closing, which means someone, me mostly, uh, has to go out every morning and open the main door to let the chickens out because there's no door automatically opening. And then as it gets dark, closing that back up again, because obviously there's no mechanism to automatically close it either. So most mornings I was the one who was getting up and doing that. Um, everyone else was rushing off to go to work and school. So I would have my coffee and then just pop my gumboots on and go over and open up the door. 
and most nights too because I am here in the evenings before everyone gets home and it's getting dark quite early now. I think by about by about six o'clock it's it's almost pitch black it feels like. So yeah I've been going over and closing it up as well and making sure that all of the chooks are inside before we close it up because we're not using the regular door some of them have been getting a little confused so we've had to make sure that they're all in before we close everything up. So we've ordered a new motor and that will be installed and all back to normal but yeah just that sort of extra routine of the day thank goodness we don't do dairy cows because there's absolutely no way i could do that early morning milking every day that would just be too much this past week i have had quite a few new subscribers so welcome and i hope you enjoy me sharing my little slice of the world here on the farm and also thank you to all of my subscribers that have been around for a little while now and have seen my progress here for the past three years on the farm. And I hope you all stick around and share the next part of whatever comes here. So a big reason for the new subscribers is that Kathy from the Whatnot podcast gave me a shout out on her video. So thank you, Kathy. I really appreciate that. And if you haven't seen her videos, she is based in Queensland. She's a knitter. Uh, she does beadwork, watercolors, which I really love and are super inspiring. I wish I could paint like that. I am, that's certainly not my area of expertise, but I enjoy watching her paint. So I'll pop a link to her channel below. So please go check her out if you haven't seen her already. Over these next few weeks here at Passion Flower, it's going to be busy. The dye pots are going to be going. I have quite a large custom order that's come through. So there will be quite a lot of dyeing going on, which is exciting. I will be creating some new colors for this order as well as getting to dye up some of my older colors that have been around for a while. It's nice to revisit some of those and also to be given some direction about what someone particularly wants and not just me dyeing up things that I feel like I want to do at the time. So as part of that, my plan is to take some video of all of that dyeing and show you some of that behind the scenes as I go along. I'm not exactly sure what format that will take yet, whether it will just be a little bit that I will pop into some of these videos or whether I will do some additional behind the scenes like I've done before. Um, it's just a good opportunity while I'm doing a lot of dyeing and have everything going uh, to just record it all and then to see how I can use that and share it with you as I go along. So before I share the progress of my current Radiate pullover, I am wearing my previous version. It's cold here today. It's only about nine degrees. The sun is out, but it's quite cold. So this is a great jumper to put on because it's like extra thick because it's both of the yarns at the top. So it's really nice and warm. So I knit this back in 2017 and it only took me a month to make. I really did love it. My second one's taking a little bit longer, but I'm still really loving that one as well. I'll put the link to my project notes below and you can check that out. But as I said, I really do love this. The blue is called Voodoo Lady, um, but the dyer doesn't dye anymore. So I won't give you the details of the yarn. The purple is Purple Sea Urchin by Dyed by Hand Yarns. And this is one of my most favorite colors. I really love it. So I like that I'm able to put it into a special jumper that I really enjoy wearing. So now on to my current Radiate. I've made a little bit more progress from last week. I've got the color in on the bottom of the hem. So now it matches with the top of the jumper. I think I've got about as much as I need to do. What I need to do now is to pop this on a longer cable and try it on just to make sure I've got the length. I think it might end up being a little longer than this one. But that's okay, I'd like it to be a little bit longer and a little bit more slouchy to cozy up to when I'm down here in the shed. So I'm really looking forward to getting that part done and then it will be the sleeves. But I think I may put the sleeves on hold 
because of the next project I'm going to show you. So the next project, the Flamingo Lane socks that I have been having a little bit of trouble with, honestly. I am not an expert at colour work, it's not something that I've done a lot of and I've had to rip them out a number of times. I think this could be it. Hopefully, this is the go that gets these socks done. I was doing really well. I had knit all of the leg and I had done the heel turn and I was doing the decreases down the foot and the gusset. And then I realized I'd made a mistake. I had decreased way too many stitches. Um, I don't normally do a heel flap and gusset, so I wasn't familiar with it. So I kind of just kept doing the decreases and I was left with the width of the heel part and not the width of the foot of the sock. Now, I probably could have tried to tink that back and just keep going. But having looked at it at that point, I also realized that I had my color dominance wrong. So I felt like the pink should be the popping color. It's the color of the flamingos and all of like the design, but the blue was popping more. The pink was sort of laying quite flat and really wasn't doing the pattern justice, I didn't think. Now I was carrying the pink on the top and I had the blue on the bottom. So I'd heard about color dominance, but I didn't really understand how it worked until I did it for myself and how I was knitting with the two strands at once. Doing them, I'm holding both of the strands of yarn in my right hand and I am now holding the blue on the top and flicking that and then I'm sort of picking up the pink when I need it and kind of looping it around and then dropping it again. So the pink is looser and therefore it is making those stitches bigger and is making it pop more. So obviously you know what I did because I'm now talking about what I'm doing now. I'd done all of that work to pass the heel, but I ripped it all the way back to the cuff and I've started again, again, again. It feels, I don't know how many times I have, but I do really want these to be right. And I feel like I'm learning as I'm going here and that my color work is definitely improving. Now I hope I don't get ahead of myself here and start to knit too tight. Um, because I'm getting more into a groove, but I think that I'm doing much better now with getting the floats right. I'm no longer twisting the two strands of yarn up on itself as I go, so they're staying untwisted because I've learned how to catch the floats without having to twist up the yarn. So that's making things quicker. Okay, I'm not sure where I got up to with my Flamingo Socks explanation because I realized that I'd run out of space on my camera. So I had to do a quick delete and hopefully now I've got enough room to finish and then I can delete everything else off later. So I have ripped them out and I have started again from just the cuff. I was able to pick up from the cuff. And I've also decided I've played around with the flamingo pattern chart a little bit. I've moved them and given them a little bit more space in between just because I thought that they seem to be stacked quite hard on top of each other. I'm not going to do any of the diamond patterning down the foot. I'm just going to alternate between the pink and the blue um, all the way down the foot and then maybe just do the, um, the toe in pink. So I um, made a few changes. I figured, well, you know, why not? Um, nothing too severe, but just a few minor changes to the chart. So I've got some photos of what they looked like and how I didn't like the way that the pink was popping out. And here is where I'm up to now. And I think that now the pink is looking much, much better. So I'm about to start on the flamingos. As I said, I need to make sure that I keep my floats nice and tight not tight, that I keep my floats loose 
They're extremely neat now. I feel much better about how they are looking. I feel that there is enough stretch in there and I am gonna try them on as I go to make sure that, especially when I get to the bit where there is like only one pink stitch, about every eight stitches, that I am keeping the tension good there and that they're not gonna end up being too tight because I'm knitting the blue too tight as well. So even though I have ripped these out so many times, I'm actually still really enjoying them. And this is my advice if you're trying a new technique. Do something, do a project that you actually want to do, that you want the finished item of because you are going to enjoy it more and persevere more because you actually want the thing. If you just do a boring swatch that has no purpose or intention, then you probably are gonna put it down and not want to persevere with it because you actually don't care how the project turns out. I gave that same advice to someone last night at Unwind. We were talking about She's a crocheter and she is wanting to start to learn to knit. And I said, don't just knit a scarf because someone says it's easy to knit a scarf. If you want to knit something, obviously not crazy hard, but choose a project that you actually want as the finished item. And there'll be people who will help you. Um, it doesn't matter if you rip it out. It, you're not hurting anyone, you know, all it is is your time and effort. And if you're willing to do it and it's something that you want to really try and do, then it's actually worthwhile and you will learn things. And the achievement you get from doing it in the end is, is worth it, absolutely worth it. So that's how I'm feeling with this color work. I feel like I've had lots of mistakes and I've had lots of fails but that each time I've redone it, I'm getting better and that I'm really, really learning stuff here and I may end up doing a colorwork jumper or a colorwork beanie or something after this because I'm actually really loving doing it now because I feel like I've, I'm getting it right. Hopefully I am. Um, and I love the look of it and there are so many patterns that I would really, really like to try. Well, that's it for another week. Thanks for spending some time with me. If you're enjoying these videos, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I look forward to seeing you next week on the farm. Bye.